Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Kill Rog Deadeye on Mythic. Yes, and this fight is substantially easier than the High Council. So if you've killed the High Council, you shouldn't have too many issues on this. However, there are things that you do need to know in order to get this guy down nice and quickly. So you can get onto Gorefeed, which is a mess. Now for this encounter, you do want to bring two tanks, four healers and a balanced DPS comp. Now the main difference on this fight on Mythic is that the fill corruption, the debuff that makes you take ticking damage, does not slowly reduce or remove itself over time. And instead, you're forced to use the cleansing aura that your healers get when they leave the Visions of Death area. Fell Corruption is also now applied through the Death Throws ability. Every time you take ticks, you will also get more and more Fell Corruption, meaning that the entire raid has to be cleansed at some point. Apart from that, Fell Corruption, just like it is on Heroic, is mainly applied through the Hulking Terror's abilities. So the majority of the Fell Corruption is going to be applied to the tanks. However, there is a couple of important changes with these Terrors. When they die, they'll leave a patch of green goo on the ground. Now, these puddles won't do anything while they're active, but after 15 seconds or so, they'll just spit out a fell blood globule. And this is bad, so you do not want this to happen. The way that you counter it, if you send a couple of people to stand inside the puddle and soak it up, after a couple of seconds, the pool will just completely despawn, meaning that you won't get the fell blood globule at all. While standing inside it, you will be taking some ticking damage and you'll also be receiving a large amount of fell corruption. To keep fell corruption at safe levels on these people that are soaking, you want to set up two groups consisting of two players at each just so they take turns at soaking the puddle, so it will despawn for every single hulking terror. Now let's go back and talk about the fight from the start. Now before you pull, you want to make sure that you have set up at least four different vision of death groups, consisting of different players in each. You want to make sure you have two DPS and a healer in each group. You should never get the fifth visions of death, and with decent gear, you might not even see the fourth, or even if you're very, very good, you might not even see the third. Now on the pull, you want to drag the boss to the opposite side of the room. Tanking the boss on this side of the room allows the melee to cleave onto the salivating bloodthirst that adds that spawn. If you have death knights, make sure you do grip them in because it's a really, really good idea because you just cleave them down a ton. However, ranged DPS, you still need to make sure you do focus them down as melee won't be able to kill all of them. Now have your ranged team stood in a single spot on either the left or the right hand side of the room. And make sure that you have a clear path down the middle of the room for the heart seekers. Now the dot applied by heart seekers is permanent on mythic. However, you can bop it off. It is also removed by entering the Visions of Death room. And also on Mythic, the boss towards the end of the fight will start applying Heartseeker to more and more targets each time it is cast. So you kind of need to kill him before too many players are debuffed with the ticking damage. Now when Hulking Terrors spawn, have one of your tanks pick it up and bring it underneath the boss. Because of the fell corruption you gain from tanking these terrors, you'll want a different tank to be tanking them each time. Now make sure you cleave it down and make sure you have your interrupt rotation sorted for the rendering how if any of these go off in mythic, it's pretty much a wipe. Now before it dies, make sure you move it out of melee and make sure it doesn't explode on anyone apart from the tanks, just to keep the fell corruption as low as possible in melee. Keep in mind when you are moving it out, you may need to organize a ranged interrupt for the rendering how because no melee are going to be in range. Make sure your soakers remove the pool so the globule doesn't spawn, and again, make sure that you rotate each soaking group just to keep fell corruption low. Now when the death throws come in, we have our entire range camp move from one side of the room to the other. Doing it this way makes AoE healing a hell of a lot easier, and remember that death throws also applies fell corruption, so everyone will be taking ticking damage along with the normal damage that is received. Now, as everyone in the entire raid will have fell corruption on them, this means that anyone targeted by the heart seekers will be spawning green globs rather than the red ones. Just take into account that these have more health and it's even more disastrous if they reach the boss, so make sure these die over everything else. Now, when the visions of death come in, make sure the boss is faced towards the range camp. If it's faced the other direction, it's quite a trek to get there as a range DPS, so it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you face it towards them. Now, whilst you are inside, you want to do the exact same thing you did on Heroic. You want to kill 20 ads and then get the fuck out of there. The explosion from the fiends and the breath from the mistresses do far more damage on Mythic and can easily one-shot you in some cases, so be very careful when fighting them. Now, once you have gotten out, DPS, make sure you kill the adds before focusing down the boss. And healers, you need to use your cleansing aura to remove as much fell corruption as possible. What you want to do with this cleansing aura is clear up the melee and the tanks first. And then as soon as they're all on zero, you then want to move to the range camp. The majority of mainstream boss mods will actually have a fell corruption display. It will show you exactly how much fell corruption everyone in the raid has. Just keep an eye on that and you'll know when to switch between groups. Also, when the Visions of Death group does actually leave, the majority of the time you'll actually have a Death Rose come in almost at the exact same time. And as a healer, when you do come out, as well as having this cleansing aura, you will have a massive healing increase. It's probably a good idea for you to be the one that uses the healing cooldown on that particular Death Rose. 
just because the amount of heal increase you have, like, it's just impossible for anyone to die. You'll start having healing tide ticks for, like, 200k and shit. No one's gonna fucking die. It's impossible. So providing you do that, that's pretty much all there is to the fight. You just repeat it from that point. As long as the right people go in the visions of death every single time, the heart seeker only hits one person and they're not near the boss, and you make sure the hulking terror dies outside the raid, and you actually rotate different groups of players to actually soak the pool, there is virtually no damage requirement on this boss whatsoever. It is literally, do not die, deal with the mechanics correctly, and the boss will just fall over at some point. Hopefully before the fifth visions. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If this guy did help you out, then make sure you leave us a like. It helps us out a lot. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.